So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody, whatever part of the world you're currently listening to our podcast. My name is Al Mina. Today is officially October the 8th. It's definitely starting to get cold outside, and you can sense that fall is in the air. Okay, so folks, uh, thank you for joining me. It's always an honor and a pleasure and a privilege to um, talk to you on our pad class. Um, you know, there's been quite a bit of stuff happening lately. So you all know there's this issue um, that took place in uh, Israel. And I wanna lift up those families and friends of those who suffered in such, you know, tragedy. I don't know what precipitated the tragedy in itself so I'm not going to provide an opinion but I would like to lift up the family and friends of those individuals that um, suffered and lost their lives with that said thank you for joining me again so this has been quite a bit of stuff that I've been reading um, lately mostly you know human rights violations that social media giants are basing, basically imposing on people that are utilizing their platform. As you all know, I'm a major advocate of the social media platform to advance economic development worldwide to, you know, for people to utilize the platform for the betterment of society and increased capacity with econ within economies of various countries. May it be frontier emerging or developed markets, but I definitely would not advocate uh, silencing dissent. I would not, you know, support any form of violation of human rights to speech, to share their thoughts and to balance things out. You know, you can't be living in a society that is dictated by the powerful. You can't be, you know, supporting and, you know, adhering to, you know, the overall imposition of the social media giant into what you should and shouldn't share or talk about on your social media platform okay as long as you're not you know using your platform to violate human rights around the world or you're not attacking people and telling people to attack other people for voicing their views um, then you know, governing the social media platform should be left on the people using it, okay? There has to be some sort of trust me mechanism within these social media platforms. They already have access to our data. Every single social media platform already has access to your personal information, okay? That's part of their whole business model it's part of the you know modus operandi of all these social media giants that's how they make money do you know, using your data so if they're going to basically violate your human rights and also utilize your data to you know basically silence you then there has to be a way to control and manage that kind of abuse of power. Okay, with that said, um, this video blog is fairly short. I, I try to make it short so that you guys um, you know, can follow our Spotify um, uh, podcast in its entirety. So this is just basically the way that I do my video blogs is to just get you introduced to you know some of the things that I'm going to be talking about but I don't want to have you guys you know focusing so much on our video blog because I want you to be able to listen to our podcast on your free time and be able to share it talk about it pause it you know do whatever it is that you that would be convenient for you to work with while listening to our podcast all I'm trying to do is you know kind of 
share information for you to reflect on. That's all I'm trying to advocate for. I'm not trying to get you to, you know, follow my instructions. I'm not asking you to, you know, be that blind sheep following my lead. I really don't want sheep to be following me to begin with. I want you to think for yourself and be able to judge certain opinions and ideas for yourself. Of course, I want people that are independent, that are smart, you know, very engaged and has the ability to discern, to follow me. You know, uh, I think it's important for human race today, especially with all these information inundating us on a daily basis, to be able to, um, you know, utilize the information to better ourselves, better others, and help this world to become a much more productive, much more inclusive, and much more efficient world for mankind to benefit from. You know, we're not going to be on this rock forever. We might as well do something good while we're on it. So, yeah, it's been very, you know, troubling for me to re reflect on, you know, um, how the social media giants are abusing their power if your opinion or your concept or your voice doesn't fit their narrative uh and most of these social media groups are you know being run by special interests organizations special interest institution anyway so if they don't if what you're saying doesn't fit their narrative you automatically get singled out you get you know stonewalled your content will not be shared and, and you know you're out of luck basically so that's something that i feel extremely disturbing um you know freedom of speech should be freedom of speech for everyone regardless of you know their opinion um obviously we don't want hate speech around you know the platform we don't want anything attacking other people maliciously but if it's an educated interpretation of a view or an experience life experience or something that you have expertise in then that's some that shouldn't be silenced by the social media giants so yeah, I'm, I'm very concerned about the social media, you know, platforms that are benefiting um, off of making profits from the public, and yet they won't let the public share our educated interpretation, ideas, and concerns on our platform. You know, put it this way, if the social media platform did put, you know, uh, profits over people, then they should have allowed both the Russians and the Ukrainians to, you know, basically voice their concerns on, to, on the social media platform, not silence one side over the other. You know, they're fighting over dirt, they're fighting over territory, right, to the territorial rights, they're fighting over economic conditions and how they find themselves uh, in a situation where they believe that they are in the right, that they they are actually doing their people a favor. And, you know, without the social media platform and not letting them um, voice, you know, their case on the social media platform. So there's really no way for the public, for the world to figure out what's really happening between Russia and Ukraine, you know, because we're only hearing one side on our social media platform. You know, never ever in human history that a social media platform was around, you know, during World War One or World War Two, had social media been around that there would have been a way for the world, especially the populations of those countries involved in a war to learn about, you know, certain issues and maybe would have been able to come into terms with a diplomatic solution rather than uh, a violent, you know, uh, iron fist type of engagement. You know, it, it's just counterproductive. Now that we have the social media platform, social media giants should give both the Russians and Ukrainians a, a platform to voice their concerns diplomatically on the platform so everybody around the world will get access to that information and learn from themselves, you know, for themselves. We can't have propaganda, obviously. We don't want propaganda. We don't want anything that is lopsided, 
we want you know a fair and balanced interpretation from both sides the russians and the ukrainians on what's really happening on what took place to you know aggravate each other and, and precipitate into a you know situation that there isn't there's no turning back once people's lives are lost once you kill people destroy you know assets you know destroy communities there's no turning back from that you know that could all been mitigated and that could always all been prevented should the russians and the ukrainians been given the opportunity by the world community by the social media giants to air out their differences and talk about you know things to solve issues amicably also i find this uh, nato member countries not caring about a nato member country citizen sitting in a ukrainian jail for talking about things that he noticed and posting it you know things that he noticed within the ukrainian government that you know concerned him and he thought uh the public ought to know about it you know i i don't see that being a violation of anyone's rights or authority you know a democracy always calls for dissent that's a part of the whole mix you know you can't have a democracy without having people disagree with you you know unless you you want to be a dictator if if that's your aspiration to silence those that are that oppose you or doesn't agree with you and is calling you out in public then that's authoritarianism that's dictatorship folks um and that you know that kind of started starting to resemble the social media giants of today where they're silencing you know voices of dissent and voices of those that doesn't appeal to them you know I mean, let the world be the judge. Let the public be the judge. Let this, the court of public opinion be the, you know, the ultimate decision maker regarding what Mr. Gonzalo Lira is sharing with the public. You know, if he's full of crap or if he's BSing people or if he's lying or he's just have this, you know, corrupt, vindic- you know, vindicate, vindicative, you know, so that he's just want to attack those that he find, you know, faults in without really providing, you know, uh, an adequate, uh, you know, uh, information and adequate interpretation of what took place, then let the, the world decide. Let the court of public opinion make that decision. So, but again, I, I find it very, you know, troubling when NATO member countries are not calling out the Ukrainian government for holding an American citizen in, you know, in, in jail, a person of war for voicing his opinion, you know, and they, and yet the Ukrainians wants to join NATO and they want to become a European Union member country. They want to become more westernized, but yet they're basically showcasing why the European Union and NATO didn't want them to be a part of the European Union and NATO to begin with in the past. Okay, you got to change your, your whole, you know, model as an organization that wants to become a Western society. You can't just silence dissent. You can't silence the, silence the voice of those that doesn't agree with you, you know. That's just the reality of life. There's always going to be people that will, you know, uh, disagree with you. You know, they're not going to like you. They're going to oppose your views. They're going to, you know, babo- they're, they're, they're going to attack you in public. That's just the reality of life, okay? You got to toughen up and, and realize that if you truly want to be a leader, if you truly want to make a difference in this world, then, you know, be more transparent, you be more proactive and open to, you know, dissent. So yes, every single NATO member countries, I'm calling you out. I want you to tell Ukraine to release Mr. Gonzalo Lira. You know, he, he's done nothing to begin with that is going to, you know, imperil anyone's lives or basically prevent 
you know, Ukraine, if they were to succeed, if this, their ultimate game plan is to succeed, nothing that Mr. Gonzalo Lira says will affect that. You know, he's simply stating his opinion. He just wanted to reflect on things that he noticed and wanted to share the things that he reviewed, tested based on his journalistic interpretation. You know, I don't know how well of a journalist he is, but since now that he's in jail, nobody would know how well of a journalist he is really because he's being silent. So it's like show, it, it, you know, it's like the Ukrainian government is actually giving him credibility for holding him in jail because, you know, um, it's like they're, they're hiding something. That's what the rest of the world's now, you know, is starting to think. What are they hiding? Uh, would it be in the best interest of the world, especially NATO member countries and the European Union, to continue to support Ukraine as well as Americans? You know, me as an American, it's a, I mean, I'm not trying to take sides between Russia or Ukraine. I'm starting to, you know, kind of doubt the transparency component of the Ukrainian government. You know, is there something that they're hiding that they don't want the rest of the world to know about, especially us Americans to know about, because most of their funding are coming from the U.S., you know, taxpayers. I don't care if they think that, you know, our taxes went to the manufacturing of those goods and services that were sent to Ukraine, but, you know, they didn't have those capacities to begin with. So we have to manufacture uh, those, you know, whatever weapons, equipment, we have to still have to manufacture those and, and then give them uh, those aid uh, in order for them to fight. You know, they engage in a battle that they had no resources to engage in. Um, you know, and, and that's just, you know, pure facts, you know, and, and let me know if I'm, I'm out of bounds or if I'm not assessing this whole situation correctly, please do leave me a comment at the bottom of this video blog, which is probably going to be ending soon. I, I think uh, uh, the allocated time for my video blog is about to end, but I will continue to com continue with my podcast and share the link at the bottom of this video blog on our YouTube channel. Um, so anyway, um, Sticking to the issue of free speech and how, you know, technology is being utilized to, you know, advance a voice or limit a voice. Uh, NATO had created that DTL-Q, uh, which is NATO's DIANA, D-I-A, N-A accelerator site. So that's pretty much, you know, within the intelligence community throughout NATO. Um, and basically what they do is monitor uh, content on online, you know, whatever is shared via, you know, uh, technological mediums. So that's four member countries, NATO member countries. So that's including the U.S. And basically um, in a visit to Copenhagen on Friday, September 29th, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg called for the development of Atlantic of an at, at Atlantic quantum community, harnessing the power of this critical technology for security for NATO member countries. In a joint statement with Prime Minister Matthew Fredriksson, the two leaders underscored the importance of closer collaboration among public, private, and academic sectors and the acceleration of responsible innovation. So, so they're trying to catch up with, you know, the current state of affairs within, you know, the IT technology realm throughout, you know, Western Europe or NATO member countries and the U.S. Um, obviously, you know, technology is much faster, much more, uh, you know, fluid. Uh, regarding the utilization of technology and most countries and governments can't keep up but to me as i said as i mentioned earlier i don't think dissent or silencing people would be a solution 
uh, to the advancement of technology. You know, the way people operate, every single one of us pretty much uses our brain, unless you're, you know, one of those people that don't want to incorporate your life experience, your education experience, your skills into assessing, you know, conditions, life conditions, experiences, and events around the world. But most, I would think, most people that would like to exercise their brain capacity would do that. So um, I want to emphasize that I'm not advocating, you know, for any form of, you know, opening up the floodgates so that anyone can do whatever they want on the social media platform or technological, you know, uh, you know, advancement of the world. All I'm saying is that we cannot, we well, should not be silencing dissent and giving people the opportunity to voice their mind, you know, concerns, whatever, um, on their social media platform. That's all I'm saying, because we don't want to live in a dictatorship. We don't want to live in an oligarchy. We don't want to live in a society or in a world where we can't voice our, our concerns and opinions, even though we have subject matter expertise in those realms and in those, um, you know, uh, overall environment. So the Secretary General confirmed, uh, let me backtrack here. So speaking alongside Prime Minister Fredrickson at the Copenhagen Quantum Conference 2023, Mr. Stoltenberg said NATO has always adopted two and adopted new, two and new technologies to keep our people safe. So people, our people, I'm hoping that he met people of every background within NATO member countries. Uh, he added, with the rapid spread of disruptive technologies. Yes, there are disruptive technologies out there, but there are also, you know, solution providers. Some of these disruptive technologies are actually improving capacity worldwide. So who makes that decision of what's disruptive and what's not disruptive? Okay, is the marketplace supposed to make that decision or is it government that makes that decision or security forces supposed to make that decision? Intelligence community make that supposed to make that decision? We don't know because they're not really having this open discussion with the public. We, I mean, they're keeping us in the dark on a lot of these things. I, I don't know why. There's no point for them to keep us in the dark, especially if we're the one that is utilizing, the, you know, the platforms. They have to educate us. I'm, I'm a major advocate of educating people. You know, you, you don't want to, you know, keep them in the dark. And then when they run a red light, you start, you know, punishing them. You know, you can't be doing that. It, it, it's, it's just not the most efficient way to operate and govern. Um, so, yeah, folks. Um, he added, with the rapid spread of disruptive technologies, we must adapt further and faster than ever before, including in the field of quantum. We need to make sure these technologies work for us, not against us. Well, that's what I've been trying to advocate for. You know, I've written books on, you know, the utilization of the social media platform to improve lives of people around the world. You know, that's been my overall agenda from the very beginning and i've been doing this and even though people didn't really care about what i'm sharing and they don't take it seriously i started writing about this stuff back in college when i was still a student at liberty university you know so um yeah it, it, it's kind of strange that uh they're just now catching up it's most mostly because these individuals never grew up in a social media era you know they're they're in their late 50s, early 60s, into their 70s, and they're trying to catch up on advancement that is so fast and evolving uh, that they don't really know how to mitigate it. They don't know how to, you know, interpret a solution that was going to be efficient. Um, I would leave, leave that to those that are developing the technology and have them share 
you know, this, the pros and cons on those technologies that they're developing. May it be disruptive or not disruptive. You know, markets have never been a consistent, you know, flow. There's always ups and downs in a market development environment. Um, and, and, you know, industries are like that, you know, human capacity is like that. Everything is, you know, it fluctuates and it, it bounces back up. And, and it, you know, you, you just don't think that there's uh, one way of doing things. There's no cookie cutter things when it, you're dealing with society. You have to be, you know, very flexible, versatile, and can think on your feet because that's how technology is. I mean, there is no way to stop the advancement of humankind because of technology. You just kind of have to teach people to be more ethical and be more balanced and, you know, um, you know, um, I, they, they, they would want to adhere to, you know, certain conditions that would uh, prevent people to abuse technology and people to misuse technology, you know, that's something that you definitely need to educate the people. It's all about educating people. Okay. But again, but if, if people don't want to be educated, then there's a repercussion for that 